Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be revisiting the covariance matrix, which we already have a video for, except this time we'll be looking at a closed vector form, uh, vector multiplication that is, for the covariance matrix. How this is different from the previous covariance matrix video, in the previous covariance matrix video we kind of defined the idea of the covariance matrix and we worked out how to explicitly calculate a simple 2x2 two two version for a specific case. We didn't, however, look at a quick formula for how do you express the covariance matrix in a compact-ish kind of form. Um, I originally wanted to put this content in that video, but I think it would have gotten really big. So here we are on a new video. So the covariance matrix, remember, is a kind of tabulation of the covariance between um, any variable and any other variable in your given situation. Okay. So how we're going to do this video is we're going to go ahead and give the answer to the closed form. And then we're going to verify that this answer is correct by comparing it with the actual covariance between the ith and the jth variable. Okay, so bear with me. Um, the setup is that we have samples x1, x2, all the way to x big n. And in our original covariance video, these were people and their preferences between how happy an apple and a banana made them is what was encoded within each one. So we have n different samples here, and each one lives in space rd, which just means that each of them is a ve vector with d components in it, and there's n of them total. Now before we look at the closed form, the content of this video, let's look at what do we expect the covariance between the ith and the jth vari uh, variable to be. So to put it back into context, the covari covariance between the ith and the jth variable would be like What's the covariance between the ith fruit and the jth fruit, the happiness index of those two fruits, right? Okay, so we see that from straight from the definition of covariance, this guy on the right side of this red line is the definition. We have a big 1 over n on the outside, and we sum up all of the ith elements minus the mean of all of the ith elements. We multiply that by... The, each of the jth elements minus the mean across all the jth elements. So it's a very similar looking formula to the variance formula, except that instead of only having one variable, we have two different variables at play here. So that is what we would expect from our closed form if we look at the ijth component of the covariance matrix. Okay? Now let's go ahead and look at the closed form itself. So this closed form, we'll put a question mark because at this stage we're not sure if this is correct yet. This says that the covariance matrix is equal to the same 1 over n we see over here. The sum, again there's a sum, i equals 1 all the way to n of xi. Now this xi is a vector, right? This is important to keep in mind. When you have two subscripts, it becomes a constant because this is saying take the kth uh, person and look up their ith element. This is saying just straight up look up the ith person, which is a vector, okay? We take that person minus the mean across all the x's. What's the mean of a set of vectors? Well, you just add them element by element, and then you divide by how many vectors there were. Same kind of deal. You multiply this by itself transpose. Now, let's look at a couple of the dimensions here to get a feel for what this formula is doing. What's the dimension of xi minus x bar? Well, that's going to be the same as the dimension of any one of these samples. So this lives in, you know what, instead of that, I'm going to do, this is a d by 1 vector. What is this guy? Well, this is the same as this, except it's transposed, so it's flipped. This is a 1 by d vector. What happens when I multiply a d by 1 vector with a 1 by d vector? I get a d by d matrix, okay? So this is not a dot product, which if this transpose were here, that would be a dot product. But since the transpose is here, this is going to be a full-on matrix after we expand it out. Going back here, what is the expected dimension of S? S is a covariance matrix. There's D different variables. So S will be D by D. So what's happening here is that we're summing up a bunch of component D by D matrices together to get our final D by D matrix. Which means that if I want to figure out what's the ijth element of my covariance matrix, then I just need to find 
I need to sum up the ijth element of each of these terms that participate in the sum. What I'm going to do now is clear the board up just a little bit because it's getting a little cluttered. Let me get rid of the information I don't need here. Um, let's get rid of this even. Don't need this. Okay. Cool. So uh, all that's left to do in this video is we're going to need to figure out what's the ijth element of this guy. Um, one thing I want to do first, I want to switch these i's to k's so that we can actually put a ij in there without getting confused with the original i. It doesn't change anything, I just change the index to a k, which is something that's not i or j. So what's the ijth element of this guy? Well, it's going to be the ith element of this guy times the jth element of this guy. Why is that true? Well, in a little picture format, we're looking at a multiplication of this kind of vector with this kind of vector. So the ijth element will be comprised by taking the ith element here and multiplying it by the jth element here. That's the setup of what's going on here, okay? The ith element of this guy is going to be simply xki minus x bar of the i, uh, i variable only. The jth element of this guy is going to be xkj minus x bar transpose. Uh, x bar j transpose. Okay? Now, what do you notice about, let me use the red here, what do you notice about this guy and this guy? They are the same. We have xki minus xi bar, xki minus xi bar, xkj minus xj bar, xkj minus xj bar. We have a big one over n on the outside, big one over n on the outside, loops from k equals 1 to n, loops from k equals 1 to n. This formulation is a closed form of the covariance matrix. Now a lot of you are thinking, awesome, why did we just do that? Um, the reason we just did that is it's going to be really nice to have a closed form of the covariance matrix going forward so we can take derivatives of it and such without having to like write out the entire matrix, okay? So there you have it, a close form of the covariance matrix proven. Until next time.